they ridiculed my struggle with addiction, they belittled my recovery, and they have tried to dehumanize me, all to embarrass and damage my father, who has do devoted his entire public life to service. Hunter Biden, he's defying a congressional subpoena this week, instead holding a press conference that you just saw. The White House was later pressed on Hunter's decision to ignore it. Here's what the spokeswoman, Karine Jean-Pierre, had to say. The president was familiar with what um, Hunter was going to say today. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, look, he's proud of his son, Hunter, and I've said this many times, as a private citizen. All right. He's a private citizen. He sure is. Joining us now to weigh in, senior counsel for the Lawfare Project, Gerard Felitti, as well as Seamus Bruner. He's the director of Research Government Accountability Institute. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us this morning. Morning. All right, Gerard, I'm going to Good jump morning. in with you. Uh, GOP House investigators are planning to move forward with criminal contempt proceedings against Hunter Biden. Uh, why do you think that he defied the subpoena in the first place? Well, this was a political stunt. He had no intention of appearing to testify because he does not want to answer substantive questions. They would be too revealing. So what he did instead was hold a press conference and play at the heartstrings of the country that he was a recovering drug addict and imperfect, uh, and he was being targeted politically. So the, the choice of a press conference is just to set the stage for political theater and avoid actually answering a legally obligated deposition. Yeah, I think... Uh... The operative phrase there being political theater. Seamus, I wanted to show you this article where Hunter told Axios that Republicans have, quote, weaponized my dad's love for me and turned his greatest strengths, his compassion, his empathy, his authenticity into evidence of corrupt complicity, which is why the Trump cult is obsessed with me. <laughs> uh, I just wanted your reaction to that uh, diatribe. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's ludicrous, to be honest with you. Uh, no, there's no weaponization of anything other than Joe Biden's corrupt behavior. There's ample evidence that Joe Biden was intimately involved in Hunter's business dealings. And Team Biden has set this trap where, uh, you know, and a lot of Congress members are falling into the trap. And the trap is that Joe Biden had to get paid directly. That's not true. The bribery statute, 18 U.S.C., Section 201, says anything of value for any official action. And so the things of value could have flowed to Joe Biden's family members. And they did flow to Joe Biden's family members, tens of millions of dollars to various Biden family members. And so the question is, were official actions performed? And the answer to that is yes, at least in the case with Burisma, where Joe Biden bucked U.S. Uh, policy and got a prosecutor fired uh, and withheld sure. taxpayer money in exchange for payments to Hunter Biden. Right. Well, no one's ever been able to ask, answer the question, what exactly was Hunter Biden selling if it wasn't the Biden name? I mean, he didn't have anything else to sell. So, you know, that's one of the questions. And where did all this money come from and for what? Right. So but you're right. Let me get back to you. Uh, Representatives James Comer and Jim Jordan released a joint statement after the after Hunter basically ignored this subpoena in, in what they wrote will not. We will not provide special treatment because his last name is Biden. That's the end of the quote. So last year, Steve Bannon was convicted of contempt of Congress and is facing four months in prison. What, if anything, is going to happen to Hunter Biden? That's the million dollar question, but the aim is to treat Hunter no differently than anyone else, including Steve Bannon. The Democrats did it themselves when they prosecuted essentially Bannon for contempt of Congress. So now it's a double standard if, Hunt, if Hunter doesn't get the same treatment. Hunter committed a crime. He refused to come before Congress. He refused to testify for a deposition. Contempt of Congress means that he has to endure consequences. If he doesn't, then it really does expose the two nature, the two faced nature of the justice system. Biden is no different than anyone else. Yeah, Seamus, the two congressmen said it correctly. Look, look we, we all know Hunter Biden's father is the president of the United States. And along with that goes pardon power. So does Hunter think that, that his dad will do what he's always done and get him out of trouble here? I mean, that's always on the table. I think most people would agree that Joe Biden uh, loves his son Hunter very much. It's the, he's the smartest man Joe knows according to him, he will absolutely pardon Hunter if needed. Um, 
But you played the clip of Corinne Jean-Pierre just a moment ago where she says that Joe Biden was aware of this press conference Hunter was going to give. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, Jonathan Turley's a great lawyer, and he says that might have opened Joe Biden up to another impeachment charge. You've got the bribery uh, to begin with, but now obstruction of justice. If Joe Biden is coordinating with Hunter uh, on you know, going in contempt of Congress, that could be another big problem for Joe. Yeah, I think that's that's correct. And about 45 seconds left, Gerard, when Democrats issued a congressional subpoena against then President Donald Trump in 2019, he ignored the summons. So do you think that President Biden will do the same? I mean, I think we're all assuming that he will. I think it's safe to assume that he will. I think it's safe to assume that he will say that he is protected by privilege from uh, from responding to a subpoena. It's not going to go anywhere, but it will be more indication. You know, people will be asking, what does the Biden family have to hide that they're refusing so steadfastly to answer questions? Well, I think, you know, gentlemen, we've been speaking about this now, and, and it's, a, it's a great question, right? So they're talking about uh, return of loans on all these checks. If there is nothing to hide, why wouldn't the president, with failing poll numbers, just say, here are the loan documents. Here you go. These are the loans from several many years ago that are finally being repaid. But there's two F- um, IRS whistleblowers that came forward and said they couldn't find any evidence whatsoever of, of loans. So, you know, again, I think it's going to be an uphill battle for him to prove the, there's no there there. But Gerard Felitti, Seamus Bruner, thank you very much. We appreciate your input.